Hello, welcome to Sportworks Kingdom Moments. Glad you could join us today. We got another hot day. We're busy getting ready for a golf tournament we have for, for our, our Memorial Keith LeClaire Golf Classic that we have to, to raise funds for Sportworks. But excited about all the work we're doing to get ready for it. But we are we are in our in our Bible, ESV Bible in First Peter, uh, starting into chapter three, the first seven verses. And and he's again if we if we go back to kind of where, where he was when we were yesterday, he says, For to this you have been called. And, and then he's going to give us all of these things. And so these seven verses fit into that category of something else, of for to this we've been called. Um, and we've begun to, to look at, and the reality is from the time we're born, we, we get caught up in the patterns of, of this world. It, it's how we, we learn from watching things. I, I mean, there's a whole lot that we do uh, within a family, how you stand, how you, how you address things, how you, I mean, we, a whole lot of it is caught um, more so than taught. And, and so patterns of this world get kind of picked up. How, how we kind of, I mean, a little girl pretty quickly learn, learns the power of her eyes on her daddy <laughs> and, and so on and so forth. And, and we have these nuances that we just kind of pick up and it's patterns of how we operate. Coaches spend a great deal of time trying to reprogram the young men and women when they get them. They, they want to help them mentally, physically, emotionally to, to reprogram, to, to toughen, to have a mindset, to have a thought process as they approach all these different things. And, and it's just a whole lot of work that goes into those things. There, there are all kind of specialist type speakers they bring in and people that they work with that that quite frankly, it's gotten a whole lot more complicated than, than many of you that are my age when, when we played. But the fact is, coaches even then were, were trying to get us to think a certain way, to have a certain approach. And, and the reality, Scripture tells us that, that, that we get caught up in the patterns. And in Romans 12, it says, Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Peter has kind of addressed those things with us so far. There's, there's this understanding of this is who you are in Christ. This is where your hope lies. You, you've died to this world and the things of this world. You, you're going to continue to suffer and go through things uh, that, that will help you, quite frankly, die to things of this world if you'll but put your faith and trust in Jesus. Understand what he did and how he bought you with, with his blood providing you a righteousness not your own, and so on and so forth. So when we get to these, if we just isolate these verses, there's a whole lot of people I think would have a very hard time. I hope you see it in light of, in light of the whole picture of everything that, that Peter's been talking about and, and what we've just kind of addressed, that God has us as his people to not live by the patterns that are simply around us, but that we begin to look at people differently, to have the mind of Christ to have the attitude of Christ we looked at in Philippians 2, that, that if Christ is supreme and preeminent in everything, that, that we have a different attitude toward things. Again, if, if we understand that, that from the start of creation, all of this is about Jesus. Jesus created it. It was for Jesus. He redeems us as his people. He, he's coming back. That, that There's nothing in this that isn't about Jesus, and we're to follow him. No matter what, we looked at it yesterday, period. So as we look at these few verses to husbands and wives, if we begin to look at one another and really love one another the way that, that Christ calls us and the way that he loves us, if I'm looking for what is beautiful in my wife to be Jesus and not outward adornment that this world just wants to stir my physical attentions and lusts, then, then, I, then I'm going to have a completely different relationship with my wife. While I still find her attractive, I think I'll find her more attractive than ever. But the fact is that it, it, it will be Jesus in her. And likewise, I need to love her with the love of Jesus. And so I'm kind of preaching it with having read the verses. So let's read the verses. Likewise, remember he's just finished, for you were strained like sheep, but have now been returned to the shepherd and oversee of your souls. And then he jumps into this. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands. Well, as sheep are, are bound to the shepherd, she, Peter is saying, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be won without a word by the conduct of their wives, when they see your respectful and pure conduct. Lord, when they see Jesus in you, 
and the way that you trust him with the outcome of things and continue to love and continue to show respect, uh, certainly the Lord, but also to your husband, that there will be, he, he won't miss it. He, he's going to see and understand that that's Jesus in you. Do not let your adorning be external. The braiding of hair, the putting on of gold jewelry, or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. There, therein lies the question. Young, for young ladies, I understand what the world tells you. And quite frankly, us guys reinforce that by the way we, we chase after that, that which is adorned and, and about things of this world. Um, he's telling us, telling you young ladies, how precious you are in his sight and the things that he sees as precious. And that, that's his spirit changing you, you trusting him and, and believing him that, that there's a guy out there. And even if there isn't a guy out there, what he's telling you is you're, you're beautiful when you live by the pattern that he just gave. The question is, will you trust him enough to leave the patterns of this world behind? And I'm not saying that's an easy thing. We, we all kind of want the things that we want in this world, and, and so it's hard for any of us to let go of any of those patterns. But we've got to do it if we really want God's best and what he has for us. And certainly within marriage, then, then we need to follow his patterns. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves, by submitting to their own husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, and you are her children if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. And Sarah followed, I mean, God called Abraham to go and they, they went all over the place. Not to mention the day that Abraham took her son Isaac up a mountain and was ready to obey God to the point of a sacrifice. And God stepped in and provided. God had promised and they trusted God in the promise. Not always. They, they, or we wouldn't have had some of the conflict with with the maidservant and the first son that was born, that they, there's still an issue. But but at the end of the day, they, they did trust God and, and they did carry it through. And Jesus is the fruit of, of that covenant, fulfilling all of it and providing a new covenant for us to have life in him. Verse 7, which is one verse that he turns to us guys, but it's powerful, gentlemen. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Now, there's a whole part of us to love our wives as, as Jesus has, has loved the church and, and to honor her. Uh, and, and when we don't, it, it affects our relationship with the Father, that he intends us to, to love them and to build them up. Again, not, not that we sit here and think of them as some weaker this or that, and that's where we get in trouble within our culture. We were wired and made differently with different responsibilities, and we need one another. And when we actually come together and truly honor and love the way that he's just described, then there's amazing glory and honor given to God as, as the culture watches on. We will look peculiar. I assure you, ladies, that, that as you consider his patterns, you go, well, I, I, mean, I just don't see many people doing that. And, and guys, quite frankly, you don't see many people loving the way, the way that we're to love. Will, will we continue to draw close to God, to know who he is, to have his heart, to, to want to honor one another? He told us to honor these folks who are in charge with authorities, and, and certainly then I would hope that we would want to honor and love those that, that we're closest to. Marriage is kind of the closest thing to, to give us this, this idea of sacrificial love and loving for one another that, that God has provided us as the church through Jesus. It's a beautiful picture of two that are willing to always look out for the honor of what's best for the other. And then Philippians had told us to, to carry that into to consider others' interests more important than our own far beyond that. Can we, will we obey God and follow him in that? He's going to bring up some, some other things in here. And the idea of suffering for righteousness sake and so on and so forth. Can't wait to get to more of it. None of it's easy teaching, but I trust that you'll hunger after the things of God. If you struggle with those things, if you struggle with, gosh, I, I just always want the nicest, newest clothes, newest this, newest makeup, ladies, I, 
Find an older godly person that will come walk alongside you. Gentlemen, the same thing. Find someone that will be you will be accountable to, that you will allow to, to watch closely how you do life with your bride in a way that they can encourage you uh, in, in ways that you need God's help and change. But again, let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you and love you. We thank you that, that you came and have rescued us, that we were dead. And, and Lord, that we're dead in, in, in the patterns of, of this world and, and need to be transformed and changed. You've given us a new heart. We, we've come and we've repented and we love you and we say we're ready to follow. Give us hearts that really want to follow. Lord, you've told us we will look peculiar in this world if we follow after you. I pray that we have the desire and willingness to be peculiar people because of you in a way that folks would see you and ask you the reason that we do things, the reason of the hope that we have. We're going to get to that in this chapter, and we thank you for it. But Lord, change us, mold us, make us into your image, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you all. You all have a great night now.